fan of softball, then you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. We're bringing you more interviews, more videos, and more product reviews than anyone else on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello and welcome to the Fast Pitch TV show. I'm your host, Gary Leland, and I bring you this show every week. Just check on our website on Fridays for a new episode. Now, if you found our show on Facebook, your, your Apple TV, or YouTube, or any video sharing device, please check out my website at www.fastpitch.tv. It's the home of the Fast Pitch TV network and the place to find all my softball videos and softball blogs. It's basically a network for fast pitch softball, so please check it out as soon as this show's over. Now, in this week's show, I am bringing you another clinic from Softball Con in Louisville, Kentucky that was held earlier this year. Now, if you're not familiar with Softball Con, please visit their website at softballcon.net. It's a great clinic and definitely worth checking out. Now, this week I'm bringing you part one of a great hitting clinic with college softball great and present head coach for the USA women's baseball team, Jenny Dalton Hill. Let's go to that clinic right after this word from my sponsor. Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? Softballjunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-stale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to softballjunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham, you just put a cool $30 in your pocket. I was an All-American at the University of Arizona and was National Player of the Year in 1996. Um, I chose to take a different route after college and I went and played baseball. And I played on the Colorado Silver Bullets. I don't know if any of you remember that, that was a long time ago. Um, but that's the avenue that I then proceeded to take after um, college. And 13 years later, I quit, or I quit playing after one season of with the Silver Bullets and was married, had three kiddos, and um, then last year decided I missed it a little too much and went back and tried out for the USA women's baseball team. Made that squad, traveled to Venezuela, and uh, then I now coach with the USA women's baseball team and I'm on the board of directors. So those are my, that's my little resume. If you would like to know it, if you don't, good, I'm glad to tune it out. But I'm here to talk to you a little bit about being, um, having a purposeful off season um, offense. Hitting in the off season gets really boring and kids need to make sure that they have a little motivation. So when you are running your off season program and you're working on offense, working on hitting, make sure that you don't just sit there and throw balls at them because that doesn't fix them. The off season is a time to teach. The off season is a time to explain. The off season is a time for them to verbalize to you what they need to be doing. Your job as a coach is to be a teacher, a motivator. And a lot of times when I walk into a high school situation, um, I'm working with two high schools right now, and as I walk into those situations, I come in and I observe for the first 10 minutes to see where I need to fit. And during those first 10 minutes, I can tell whether those coaches are teachers, whether those coaches are dictators, whether those coaches are tellers. And what I mean by tellers is simply regurgit or telling the kid what they're doing wrong rather than having the kid understand what they need to be doing. So on the teams that I then coach, my job I take as a teacher. And I hope that that's what you're doing as well. So when you get into a practice, what's the first thing you do? Do you expect your players to have a goal or do you give them a goal? I've done both. Some days we have a team goal. Some days we have a goal where everybody today, we're gonna to make sure that our backside's through the ball. Everybody, that's your goal today. Then I also have days where I take it and each kid has to have their own goal. Maybe the kid that needs to get their backside through doesn't understand what that means. Take a little extra time and explain what that means. But then this other kid gets her backside through every time, that's not the problem. So making a team goal doesn't really help her that day because that's not her issue. Make sure that you help your kids understand what they need to work on. There's one high school that I work with right now where when I am behind the screen throwing front toss, the kids are saying, what did that look like? Did I drop my backside? Did I drive my backside through the ball? Did my front arm lead too high? 
The kids are constantly interacting with me. Then when the other coaches get in the cage, they throw front toss, the kids are silent. And the coach isn't saying anything either. Make sure that you are a coach that's teaching your kid to fix themselves. Because if I, I'm pretty sure you don't have your kids 24 seven. You have them for a season, whether it's a high school season, or if it's a travel season, or a middle school ball season, you have them for a brief period of time. Your job when you coach your kids is to make sure they understand them, because they're the only one that goes from place to place to place. If they don't understand what they are doing themselves wrong, then each coach is molding different things. But each kid is not a robot. There is not one swing that works for every single kid. Some kids need hand separated, which is not mechanically what you teach the generation or teach the, the whole group. But some kids need that. Some kids need hands tweaked a little bit. Some kids need a higher elbow. Some kids need a, a smaller V. Some kids need to focus on their C to the ball. Now granted, those are all terms that I use. They may not correlate to the things that you know, but they're all mechanics that the kids need to understand. So by you being here, you are doing a fabulous job of educating yourself. But then are you taking that back to your players and at making them understand themselves? Make sure you are a coach. Now, okay, that sounds rude. I can't tell you what to do. But if your kids understand themselves, they can fix themselves away from you. I start, let's take it as a six week preseason, because normally you can go from January, we'll take it as a high school season just for this sake. So January 1 to February 15, six weeks. In that six weeks, break it up. The first two weeks, T work. And on those T's, you are walking around and you are telling the kids what they are doing wrong. You're dropping your backside, here's what you need to do. You're pulling your front side, here's what you need to do. Your front side is pulling, you need to make sure that you're relaxed. Your back side is not getting through the ball. Tell them specifically the things they're doing wrong. Then slowly remove yourself from the equation and switch it and say, what did, uh, what did that feel like? Make them tell you. Make them verbalize to you. How many of your kids feel comfortable approaching you with problems? Hopefully, all of them. But this morning at my practice, I, I coach a 12U softball team as well. This morning at practice, one of my girls said, Jenny, can I come up to you after practice? I have some things to ask you about because my coach at my high school team is telling me some different things. I said, sure. So she brought the questions to me and she said, Jenny, my coach went to a clinic and he learned that when I hit my back arm, I'll generate more power if I raise my back arm. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay, we're gonna work with this. Because it is not your biggest pet peeve. My dad says, I hate that. As soon as she says that, I tune out because there's no point in me saying anything from that point on because dad is more important than what I say, which is fine. So my job as a coach with a kid who comes to me with, my dad says, my job is to then translate. What your dad is trying to tell you to do is this. So this morning, when she tells me, my coach went to a clinic and he learned that if I do this with my back arm, I can push harder through the ball and I'll just gain 10 feet on my result. In my mind, I'm like, he's on crack. But you can't say that to a kid because you don't want to lose validity with them either. Nor do you want the other coach to think that you're in competition with each other. So your job as a coach is to then say, all right, if this is what you're giving me, here's what I need you to be aware of. As soon as backside flies, you need to be careful of your hands because the biggest problem you're gonna have is when elbow flies, grip's gonna rotate. And as soon as grip rotates, you can't get through ball. So, yes, you can do what your coach is telling you, but be aware of your hands. Another thing you need to be aware of, when back elbow flies, you have to make sure that on your approach to ball, you don't overcompensate and come into side. As soon as you come into side, your barrel will drop. So here's what I want you to do. When coach tells you to do this, you have to think elbow has to clear my belly. So you're right. 
Your coach can be right. Any coach can be right. But you have to make sure that you sell correct mechanics to your kids. And that's your job in the off season. In the off season, teach correct mechanics so that when they get to another coach, they understand what they have to do. Somebody can tell me that I hit better with a stance that starts like this. Some kids it does. Some kids need to be open before they begin to see ball better or whatever reason it is. But if they then overcompensate and dive to ball, hands don't clear, hips can't generate power. So your kids have to understand that if you start here, here's where you end. Teach your kids correct mechanics. If you hear something here today that deviates from the norm, can it help a kid? Yes. It totally can help maybe one, two, three kids. But if you take it back home and you generate it as a blanket for everyone, this is how we're gonna do it this year, you screwed your program. Because you might have one kid that it helps, but you might have four kids that it screws up. So make sure that the things you learn here today and yesterday that you translate them to each kid, that there's a purpose, that there's a goal to each kid you're using it on. One year, a school here in Louisville I work with, he heard that you have to, that he didn't want me to teach that year to have any kind of pre-motion, negative motion, or trigger, meaning a backward motion before moving forward. So, are my hands tied? Yes, the person I'm working for says, no pre-motion, we're not teaching pre-motion this year. Blanket statement. Does that work well for some kids? Yes. Some kids, as soon as they push back, they lock out. And as soon as you lock out, you sweep through. But what about that power hitter that already has this motion down and has pre-motion and I'm supposed to harp on her, no pre-motion. No pre Make sure you take back the things that, are, that you can utilize for each individual kid, not a blanket statement for your program. The purpose of your off-season is to teach, instruct, and help kids understand themselves. If your kids don't understand themselves, they cannot help you. Because in a game, what is your job? Yell and scream? You're, you're a chess player in a game. You're simply figuring out where are the pieces, what will work, here's what I want you to do. Your job in the preseason and in the off-season is to instruct, to teach to structure your practices so your kids understand what they need to do, so that they feel open enough to come to you when there's 30 kids working and you can only look at one, you can yell across the room, you're dropping your backside, and they fix it. That you can look next door to what's going on here and say, your front side's flying. And they can fix it. But if you don't, if they don't have the knowledge of their swing, and of how it needs to look, then they cannot help you help themselves. Welcome back. Now that last short video you just saw was for my new magazine, Fast Pitch Illustrated. It's for the iPad. Now if you want to subscribe to it or just find out more information about the magazine, go to FastPitchIllustrated.com. Now I hope you enjoyed Jenny's clinic. Make sure and come back next week for part two of her clinic. Now if you have an iPhone or an iPad, you need to look at all the apps we've created for those devices. At this time we've created eight different apps just for the iPhone and iPad. Go to app.fastpitch.tv. Now don't forget to check out our new skills video channel at coacheslook.com. It's a great way for high school players to get noticed by college coaches. Well, that's all for today. So until next week, this is Gary Leland saying goodbye and thanks for watching. This show
Show is a member of the Fast Pitch TV Network.